Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Sir Michael Rocks record, Banco. This is the latest full-length project from California via Illinois rapper Sir Michael Rocks, a guy who is mostly known for his affiliation with the rap duo The Cool Kids, which if you don't remember also features the input of rapper-producer Chuck English. And when The Cool Kids hit the internet and blew up, they got pretty big. They were one of the first hipster hop sensations before Das Racist, before ASAP Mob, before Death Grips and Danny Brown and Odd Future and all that. I was loving tracks like Pennies and 88 and I Rock and Black Mags, pretty much most of that Bake Sale EP. If you loved 80s hip hop and really fat beats and simple flows, clever rhymes, a good sense of humor, then the cool kids are worth checking out. Their lyrics weren't overly complex or, or deep or anything like that, but they knew how to write really instantaneous, fun, creative, hip-hop music that had a, a seriously fresh edge to it. And maybe that Big Sale EP, maybe some of those singles haven't held up too well in recent years, but I feel like the reason for that is is that once the Cool Kids dropped that EP, they really needed an album to seal the deal and solidify the fandom they had built up so far. And when they dropped the full-length LP that really came too late after the Bake Sale EP, uh, it was kind of a fumble. And as a duo, ever since the release of this album, the Cool Kids have remained relatively silent. And the solo material they've been dropping since their slow fade to black has begun has been pretty mediocre too, if I'm gonna be honest. And going into it, I thought Banco was gonna be another instance of the Cool Kids running on creative fumes ever since the release of the Bake Sale EP. And maybe there are some people out there, given my reputation, who would think I would say, the same thing. Because even here on Twitter, we have Mike Rocks <laughs> telling me not to review this. I'm so picky, I just cannot be pleased. Well, I, I'm happy to say that even though Banco is, is not a perfect album, I did think it was a fun and enjoyable album. Even though Mike is roughly at the same level of lyrical ability that he was when the cool kids were at their most popular, and he pretty much grabs a bunch of rappers who are around that level as well, other than Twista. His feature is fantastic, and he kills Mikey on the beat. But still, I have to commend Mike on this, recapturing the simple, fun, silly attitude that made the cool kids so irresistible when they first hit. On Banco, we have some really infectious pop rap with some kind of eccentric, playful beats. The intro song on here is one of the few that actually takes a, a serious tone. We get a bit of backstory from Mike talking his transition to California, sort of suffering the death of a loved one in the process. He raps a bit about his current state in music, depression. There are a lot of brags weaved into these lines, but some kind of surreal, psychedelic, and unsettling imagery too. This track is kind of like a bad trip, which is a little misleading because the rest of the record is pretty lighthearted because a mood change comes really quickly right on the next song with Memo. There's a punchy beat on this track, a wonky melody, some synthesizer chords that kind of sound like a, a phasered baby accordion, and the hook on this thing. I'm ballin', did you miss the memo? It's enthusiastic, it's funny. Lyrically, there's a lot of typical rap shit here, but it sounds like a party we're all invited to. Then there's the song Some Ish, with some weeping guitars in the beat, the groove is very punchy on this thing. I'm loving the uh, tremolo synth chords, and then there's also the twist of feature on here, which is great. And topically, this song is kind of about a uh, meeting a bisexual lover. Again, not a very deep track, but a very fun track. All the same, if you love some hip hop that is doused in sexual fantasy, then give a listen. Then there's the song Bussin'. Maybe one of my favorite tracks off this LP, Casey Veggies, I Am Sue. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, also on this track. It was one of the first songs I enjoyed from this thing. There's a beautiful icy synth melody on this track, kind of a non sequitur hook. What's most enjoyable about this song is that not only is it just kind of an earworm, but it's just filled with intoxicating young boy swagger. And these sort of underground hits just kind of keep coming with tracks like Drug Dealer, where Mike's kind of just paying homage, paying tribute to the drug dealer, but kind of like in, a, in an older 90s sense as he paints a portrait of this guy that has numerous cell phones and beepers. Then there's the song Kill Switch with Rob Banks and Puya, another pretty good track, and the beat has this awesome 
bottle rocket sample that makes the song so noisy and ear grabbing. The song Lost Boys as well, sort of a weird lo-fi country rap hybrid with Trinidad James and Mac Miller, both of whose verses are pretty decent, they measure up. There's all sorts of slide guitar in this beat, and for verse after verse after verse, the, the Lost Boys theme kind of works. The main tracks on this record for the first three-fourths of the project are all pretty great. It's just that they're interrupted by these experimental songs, by these skits, some of which are good and funny, like the song Cold Sore, the Pokemon reference on that skit kills me, but then there's the skit Docs, or the Dino Feeding skit. The song PlayStation 1.5 is kind of underwhelming, as is the song Fuck Sea World, though I do think the very close of that song is humorous. I think the absurdism and, and, the, and the playful attitude of some of the songs on here that I love also leads to some underwhelming tracks as well, and that's all. These skits and these weirder tracks still do add character. One of the only songs on here I think I strongly stand in opposition to is maybe One Time, which to me is just a half-assed song through and through. One time, winter time, summer time, any time. Then there's the song New Pussy with Too Short and Chuck English. The beat on this track just screams DJ Mustard. It's just kind of a trendy throwaway. Then the song Francois, not a bad track as well, but not exactly a winning closer either. Maybe something that was a little bit more personal or meaningful like the intro track to kind of bookend the whole thing and just kind of make it feel like an experience would have been more fitting, but whatever. Overall, it's not a bad LP. I will say this again, but it is fun. It's catchy. It's not that heady. If you're looking for something that's a little lighter on its meaning and is just trying to make you laugh and is just trying to get a hook stuck in your head, but isn't as dumbed down, isn't as overly simplistic as some of the hip-hop you might hear on the radio, then give this thing a listen. I do think this record is its smarter than it lets off. It may be braggadocious, it may be materialistic, but it's kind of ridiculous as well. And I mean that in a totally good, complimentary, positive way. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Tran, Zishin, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Banco, forever. <laughs>